Welcome back to the channel, y'all. This is my Opus off-road camper, and it'll go just about anywhere my truck can go. But it's not willing to stay out there in the woods as long as I can. So we're gonna fix that today. This camper comes with three AGM batteries, and it has three 100-watt solar panels. But when you got overcast weather and the family running every kind of device, it just doesn't have the power. The easiest and best solution to this is to add some lithium. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. And if you guys are interested in adding lithium to your RV, your boat, whatever, stay tuned. I've got a promo code that's gonna save you some money. I've got a buddy down the street. He's rewired his camper before, and he's gonna make sure we don't electrocute ourselves. So let's head over to his workshop and get to work. This is Lance. Many of you uh, know Lance from my fishing videos, but we actually used to be college roommates. That's how we uh, got to know each other. Back in the day. Yeah, you, when you used to bass fish, and then you then you went all steamboat yeah. trout guy on me. I don't think I'll, honestly, I don't think I'll ever go back to bass fishing. I like trout fishing so much. Well, it's okay. It's okay. To each his own. I like to dabble. I'm a, I'm a trout dabbler. First and very important step: cut the power off and also disconnect these solar panels because those those puppies the way it is right now there's no manual shut off for the solar it's going to pull power into the batteries have power in those wires even if i've got the the master power off right now so we're going to switch that up actually don't want to electrocute my friend lance today so he's probably going to be digging in those wires more than i am so i'm going to climb up on the roof and we're going to disconnect the panels proper footwear should probably be needed but Going with Crocs. A little middle age jump. And we made it. Why are you breathing so loud? <laughs> All right, so we got three 100 watt solar panels up here. And this is where all that power is coming in from. Comes through here and then it goes down into the solar controller. I'm just going to disconnect it right here. Some metal pliers, shove it in there, real good. <laughs> the plastic part. You know Dude, what you're looking at, right? These things are already starting on like weather crack. Well, that's because it's sun, UV rays. It's just hard to get in there. Oh god! Really? I just <laughs> scared. There she blows. Uh, one, two. Woo! There you go. Just leave it like that. All right. We're gonna be all right. Now we need to go check to make sure we're not getting any okay, power. Okay, before we go, is that the only, just to double check, is this the only wires going in the, in the camper? Uh, yes, that is the only wires. Everything, everything is coming right here. And then they come to here? Yes. All right. All right, dismount. Funny some videos right here. Oh, God. Oh, God. What oh, are you, God. oh. Oh, God. <laughs> You were supposed to step on the uh, propane. I know, I couldn't see it. I missed it. That was uh, that was almost really bad. Now that our power is off, step two is going to be to remove the batteries. Now, just to make sure we're not getting any power here, I've got Mr. Wizard. He's still blinking, but he's, uh, he's connected directly to the batteries. <laughs> you ever hit your head on the roof? Yeah. Right, right at the top of the cap, yeah, man. We should, we should raise this yeah. up. <laughs> there we go. Is your back hurt yet? Yeah. This is part that scares me, too. I hate messing around with boat batteries and any kind of batteries where you, you got a wrench and you're trying to play operation. You ever play that game when you are a kid? Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, that's basically what you're doing. Yeah. I'm you like, can take the ground off and then it would the ground going to the chassis right there. I've taken the ground off. It's a pretty tight little space. I know yours is tighter, but getting these 45 pound, 55 pound batteries, whatever they are out of here. Oh, those things are probably like 80 pounds. Yeah. Hey, you're gonna probably save half the weight. We're dumping weight. 100 pounds probably. Uh, I mean, in my boat, I took three of them out and replaced them with one. And now you can eat more donuts. You're regretting your decision to help me right now? No, I'm just doing like I do every project. I just you stare at it. Sit there and think. 
You need a beer? This is normally no. a good time for beer. It's kind of early though. It is Friday. It's like 9.30 a.m. Yeah, this is a very interesting bus bar because everyone I've looked at, every diagram video I've seen, it don't look like that. <laughs> the Australians <laughs> don't know what's going on, man. Hey, man, there's probably some Australians watching this video. Yeah, probably. Don't dog them too bad. I, well, I don't think Opus uses that bus bar anymore. That's uh, yeah, what they, they said. They don't, yeah. They started rewiring them differently. So let's pull those batteries out, get in there, Lance, give me two at a time, and uh, let's see you drag those out. Get in here. Get in here with the legs. Come on now. Oh, my God, I can feel it already, dude. I think it's honestly better if I get one-handed and then I get a hand on the ground. Oh, here, what? I just don't want to damage these things. You got to pull it straight out of there, Dago. There we go. There we go. You got it. Don't bump your head. On like your a way. kettlebell. Come on, baby. You got to let them know how strong you are. Yeah, I'll let my back know. Oh, oh my gosh. And your fingers. You drop that battery, it's going straight <laughs> to the floor. Woo, <laughs> <laughs> oh. son. Yeah. I got it. I got it. Yeah, buddy. Okay, folks. We have taken out the AGMs. The next step is to take out the charger. So this is the charger it came with. We're basically replacing it with the exact same thing, just a lithium capable um, charger. It's the same model. It's going to go in the same spot. We're having to trace the wires right now to the control box here. Is that the proper term, Lance? Transfer switch. Transfer switch. Pardon my stupidity. All this game is now is literally tracing back all these wires. We're going to disconnect them. We got these old, um, you know, old twisty cap fun hat things. We're going to take those off and actually uh, replace them uh, with the... I don't know why they didn't use those. Like, they, they used them in the rest of the transfer. Yeah, that is weird. Well, that's a, that's a faulty... That's a... Uh... Lance is taking photos of this. This is smart. This is what you should do if you're ever digging in your boat or camper or whatever. I recommend going with these. I think they're called Wagos. They're just like uh, snap connectors versus these because when you're driving down the road, you're basically creating an earthquake, and these will rattle loose. You're creating earthquakes. Yeah. What kind of tires are you using? Well... It just everything vibrates basically. I understand. And uh, if they if this if this is a ground or a live, if it comes loose, things won't work. And it's happened in my camp right when I first got it, and I immediately switched over to these snap connectors, which are a lot easier to work with too. Yeah, they do look easier to work with. So uh, we're gonna take those off and then replace them uh, with the the wagus. That sounds good. I think tasty. It's wag wago. <laughs> I think they wagu. are wagu. I think they are wago. W a g o wagu. right? Uh, wago wago. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Why go? Why go? Some German made Something it. like that. I don't know. Let's disconnect. Yeah, I can I can use this. Um, Festool. Here, you might have to adjust it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, give me some more power. Don't you not use a drill? I do. <laughs> I just want to look as stupid as I can on camera. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I want to let everybody know if I can do this, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. I just got to have a buddy named Lance. <laughs> Alright. These little party hats are coming off. Dude, come look at this. What? So the uh, transfer switch, which is decently heavy. Oh, the screw just fell yeah, out. Just got that off. Yeah, the screw just fell out. Nothing on this side. Nothing on the ground but some, like, caulking. One screw was holding this. Look oh at this. Oh my god, dude. Yeah. And this is an off-road vehicle. Yeah, we're gonna have to reinforce that for sure. I thought I thought this was like joined right here. It was. The screw just fell out. It's on the ground right there. Look at that screw. It's like a quarter of an inch screw. This is an opportunity to kind of fix some of these things. This is an off-road camper. It's supposed to be an off-road camper, and we've taken it down logging roads, down off-road trails, and a lot of this stuff has rattled out. <laughs> Was that? I know. I think you Something up. just. Yeah. Um, but th this this Opus, it has been it's overbuilt on the bottom and it is underbuilt in a lot of areas. Like little things like that, little screws, connections, latches that I mean they just don't last. It's incredible. So Opus got to step up the game on the finishing aspect of it. A lot of bass boats are like that too. 
they're very well built on the outside, the hull connection, everything, the and finishing. You break terrible. them down and it just falls apart. Yeah, in like one year, you got screws coming out of the console and all that stuff. So, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, reinforce that since that has a lot of weight. That's a weight bearing wall. One of the other issues I've had with this thing is the, uh, the the carbon monoxide detector goes off in the summer months when it's hot, when the camper's closed down, and it's always powered. So we're, we're going to rewire that into our new bus bar. The way it was wired before, quite honestly, too, it was, it was not wired in the best way to get the most out of the power and charging, uh, the most effective way to do it. So we're going to show you how to do that right now. We need to show what a real bus bar looks like. Well, I got it. That is shoddy. That is shoddy. And it's confusing. So we're going to switch to literally a red bus bar. Yes. You know, everything positive is going there. And a black bus bar. Our only problem is having enough length. All right, so we're going to probably take the 1,000 watt inverter, move it over about two or three inches because we gained the room here. Mm -hmm. And then we'll probably put our positive and then our negative at like a 45. And these wires that we can't add link to, I think they will, they'll make it. And I think we'll be fine. Oh my gosh, so much lighter. All right, y'all, star of the show right here. This is what is going to transform the camper into stand out there for a couple days to stand out there pretty much as long as I want. So that is the lithium battery. These are pro guide. These are deep cycles. These are ones I would put in my boat as well. Uh, I put a little bit different one in my boat. I had a 36 volt one battery. This is three 12 volt batteries and we're gonna wire them in, uh, in parallel. It's 12 volts, but we're getting 300 amps and we'll be able to use all of them. With AGMs, you're only able to use half the batteries uh, potential and then once you get that below that 50% you start damaging the battery so these are awesome batteries uh, you can go to pro guides website I'll link it down below and you can save 15% off their batteries with free shipping use code LFG that's huge guys so if you want to power your boat power your camper power your golf cart whatever with lithiums and their AGMs you can use code LFG and save huge there so let's uh, let's wire these babies up. Put them in parallel. Put them in parallel, and this is literally going to energize the camper to an unstoppable level. Heartbeat right here, baby. This is the heart heartbeat. It's a shame they're so, so they're so pretty because they're going to be going below the deck of the camper, and I'll probably never have to mess with them ever. Uh, these lithiums they last a long time. I think it's like seven eight years before you have to start replacing them. So. That's uh, dramatically more life. Thousands of cycles. Thousands of cycles. And the biggest thing with the camper is, you know, I go, we go on these trips and we're using the power and then we get back home, we charge the batteries and then what does it do? It just, it just sits there. And then it's terrible for AGMs. AGMs like to be charged up, go down. They like to be in, you know, a, a cycle of charging and discharging. These, I could charge them up. I set them at the HQ, give you an HQ. It sits there for three months. I go back to my camper, I'm still at 100%. Uh, that's the amazing part about lithiums. So, let's plug them in. Let's get that heartbeat pumping. I mean, you really want a good connection here. And that, my friends, is a good connection. Gosh. Look at this. This is this is gonna be beautiful. This is almost like artwork at this at this time. Compared to what was going on in there before. This is how it should have come. The only thing you gotta worry about is overflowing that toilet. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're gonna, we'll, have, we'll solve that problem when we go to Colorado. We're gonna get another <laughs> cassette there. The, uh, the wife and the Get children. a shovel. I'd say get a shovel. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how see how well that works out of camp. Get a shovel. Yeah. yeah. My, my Here, honey. Here's a shovel. Number six, basically. Go grab me the hydraulic press. And you gotta put number six uh, dies in it. Does that make sense? Yeah. What are you doing? 
feel like I'm giving surgery to this thing. Folks, we've opened up a whole new can of worms. I, I, I thought everything was like back there. No, there's there's a whole nother there's a whole nother brain. We just found a whole nother brain in here. And we're trying to figure out where these solar wires are transitioning from out of the solar controller to the power back there to the batteries like how is where are the wires where it charges up the batteries this is a huge thing that we have to get right as usual what you think is going to be like a four-hour project is an all-day event so for the one person watching this that has an opus or maybe wants to get one i'm going to fill you all in on the inner workings so there's two main fuses in the back and I was always confused of what they're really connecting to and I think we figured it out here. So this is the solar controller right here. We've got these, uh, the brown and the blue coming from the roof. The red and black is connected onto the controller and then it feeds down into here and goes into this little transformer. Off of that transformer, comes a thicker gauge, uh, they put seven, seven gauge black and red wires coming off of that. That runs down underneath and then comes out over on this side and connects to the bus bar back here and then the red connects on to the fuse. So instead of having like a normal little DC fuse panel that's got a bunch of little fuses in it, We've got this transformer thing, a bunch of wires coming off of it with one big fuse back here. What we've decided to do is take our new solar controller and install that under here. I'm gonna actually gonna install that behind the wood so you won't even see this thing ever. But this is going to Bluetooth to a app and we'll be able to see the networkings of that plus the shunt this is going to be the the real the calculator basically of seeing what is coming in and what is going out this is a huge step up from what i had before which was basically on this panel and i would just look at the percentage it went from zero to a hundred and you know when you got below 50 percent, it was not good but it's, it's just not a very accurate reading now with the lithiums, I'm probably not gonna have to worry about this anyway, but it is nice to see like on a sunny day, oh, this is how much is coming in, or on a cloudy day, this is how much I'm, I'm using, and this is how many days I could really last out here if the conditions stayed as they currently are. So I'm going to work on installing the solar controller over here. Lance is gonna work on the, uh, the bus bars and the master uh, control panel. We're gonna have a main power switch and this is going to cut off the power so whenever I'm uh, storing it or whenever we just need to completely shut off everything we'll be able to flip that switch right there in the middle all pretty like and shut her down done doing the uh, bus bar positive and negative I hooked up the inverter again we still have to screw the inverter into the wall um, but everything that was like hanging here is now connected with uh, solid connections we have to screw the uh, fuses back but everything else is connected all we have to do is put the uh, charge controller back on put the uh, transfer switch back up the batteries up the batteries up and we're yeah. technically back to where we were yep and then we can add on the cutoff the shunt and your the you, shunt's gonna be a big deal where i'm at right now my little corner oh we are adding the cutoff for the solar take that off there and you guys can kind of see that's just a switch for the audio speakers going in and out and so what i did was i added a uh basically a, uh, a switch that runs in between the power to the solar, which uh, is right here. This blue 
and this brown. The brown is hot, I think, going up to the panels. And we're hooking up to the solar controller, black and red, cut some more wire, added this switch, and then we're, we're gonna mount that right here. All, all we need to do is just uh, screw down the solar controller here and we'll be in business. Ozzy and Neggy. All right, my man. We are officially hooked up with a cutoff switch on our solar. Okay, so we need to go negative on the left side. Yeah, I would. Just put them in there for now. We got to play around with it. Negative on the left side. Yep, just put it back there and see what it looks like. Last one. Hopefully those wires are not in the way. I moved those fuses over quite a bit, so. <sighs> Big moment. I honestly, I like the way that they have multiple terminals because it's gonna make it like streamlined. Mm -hmm. And then, so when you put three batteries like this, or multiple batteries, you want the positive coming off one side, and then you want the negative coming off the other yeah, side. It's like one big battery. Yes. Yep. If you do both on one battery, they won't drain as equal, and you probably ruin the life of it. Or and charging wise too. Correct. We got positive, Did negative. Not, yep, yep, yep. We have our shunt that measures everything. We need to go get the uh, the DC um, expansion panel. Uh, put that somewhere we put it on the ground or put it over here and then all we gotta do now is measure the two gauge wire to this and to that this will have the negative this will have positive going through it and you ideally want to have them roughly the same length um, for energy flow and you don't get any resistance explain lost. the shunt to everyone because i think this would be something cool to put on a bass boat as well a absolutely um so the shunt is a electrical device it's bluetooth goes to the app and it measures current in and out and gives you an accurate percentage versus looking at a battery monitor or an rv and pushing a button and it's got four little lights and it goes half <laughs> right it's just a made-up number basically mm -hmm. off a of voltage this says hey you took in 100 percent current while you were charging at home and it measures the current going out and so uh it's, it's very accurate very yeah, accurate. We'll be able to tell what's going in, what's going out with that device right there. Yeah, so if, like you were on a bass boat and you're six hours into it, you can be like, oh, I got 50% left. I'm good to go. Yeah. Or, man, I could fish two days off Correct. this if, I, if I'm using, you know. And they're not. I'm just going slow, fishing little grass lines. They're right? not expensive. They're like 160 bucks, 50 bucks. Yeah, it's not crazy. By the way, the full, I'm going to say the total price on redoing all this is uh, about four thousand dollars well yeah all the all the electronics that i've bought um you know including the batteries everything is going to be about that so most I, I see so many people upgrading their campers to to lithium and, and solar it makes so much sense uh but one day y'all bass boats are going to be solar back deck lithium <laughs> you just never stop you just keep going googlesquad.com all your electrical engineering organization needs go. Mm, yeah lock that baby on there now the fun part oh oh man yeah that's gonna be a bear master power engage it's go time baby it's time to test the power, my guy. Plug into, I guess. Flip that master power, dude. Turn on a light switch or light. Here we go. You can't turn on the. You can't turn on the AC. Here we go. <laughs> Is it gonna work? I'm so nervous. Is it gonna work? Oh wait, I have to turn on the lights for here, right? Uh, I'm gonna have to turn that fuse power on. Let's we'll see. Here we go. Here we go. You have power over there? Nope. No power. No power. Uh oh. The ground. 
what it is. The, your, main, your main fuses. Are right, you ready? All right, yeah. Got the main fuses on. Main fuses are on. Well, backup big, fuses. Yep, big here's, boy. Here, well, these are fuses. This is your cutoff. You ready? Yeah, big, okay. So turn it on. Power on. I'm nervous. Power over here. Come on, baby. Yeah! Oh, wait, no, it cut off. What happened? Did it cut off? Oh, no, there it goes, there it goes. We have power. Turn it's, the lights on. Turn it's the saying lights on the roof. Make sure everything works. 13.1 volts. Lights. Okay. We now, got lights. You want to try the inverter? Do you have anything here that would plug in? Big moments. Is this on? Yeah, it's on. Big moments. All right. Plugging that in. You got to turn the inverter on. I know. I'm going to make sure this is on. I think it's, I think it's on. Okay. Inverter going on. I see green lights. Fan is on. I know you can't hear it. It's not very dramatic. But it's working. There it goes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. Inverter's happening. We have power. What's the shunt saying? Do we well, have shunt logs? You do, but you, you got to go into your settings. Your settings haven't been messed up or meant or... Your yeah. settings haven't done. Yeah, you're correctly. right. Yeah. Current, we're, we're pulling uh, 4.3 amps. Yeah. But you're going to want to go by watts on everything. It's the easiest thing yep. to remember. We'll get all this dialed in. Yeah, baby. Let's go. All right, we're going up. We're going up here to connect the solar back. <sighs> Oh, no, the knee, the knee. Oh, goodness, the knee. All right, there we go. We're back in. This is a big moment right here. Big moment. Well, bam. We are pulling zero to 0 0.1 amps right now in the shade. The Victron is working. We're Bluetoothing inside of that thing. I will. I will know exactly what is going on when I'm out there in the woods now. I think we're done. We're putting on the finishing touches right now. All right, chickens are out. Little Ben is eating a campfire marshmallow, Mr. Penny. Pretty fired up. Emmy is getting her marshmallow. And we have a dude doing carpentry here on the outside of the camper. We're gonna turn this off. Hopefully we'll have a big game on there someday. Probably not, we're a wee camp. But I've been messing around with the camper all morning guys so tidying things up uh, i've i've labeled everything i want to give you guys a walk through and just review everything that we've done and i've been trying to just run everything on the camper right now to really get a test on on the power drain those batteries down a little bit and i'm going to turn that solar power on even though we've got clouds and i just want to see how much we are getting uh, what the difference is and, and really get like a calibration and then we'll charge things back up, reset. Uh, we'll, do, we'll do another calibration for the shunt. And then the, the camper will know, the shunt will know where all the batteries are at full. And that way we can get an accurate reading. I think the only thing that you guys didn't see us install last night was this little 12 volt USB right there. So that is run underneath the drawers. Um, the big thing that we installed right here that we can add to for the 12 volt DC is this little panel. These little lights light up when the fuse uh, goes out and so we've got one new USB outlet onto that and we also have put the uh, carbon monoxide alarm on here. So that is right here. You guys can see it's on right now. So when this thing is sitting, I've got the master power turned off. Um, I won't have to hear that beeping anymore. So this is master power. 
Um, coming directly off the first negative is the shunt, and then the shunt is wired directly to the battery on the far end positive. We have our uh, positive bus bar here, we have our negative bus bar underneath. Before this was all just one weird panel, I, I didn't really understand it. It was one bus bar, everything was going in there. Now you can clearly see what's positive, what's negative. The batteries and the terminals are cleaned up dramatically. Really clean power with the multiple terminal terminals. Um, we, we installed the charger, which was there before. It just wasn't lithium um, capable, so we charged a, a lithium capable charger in there. And we finally have figured out these, these little fuses over here, which I have labeled. So kind of important, this goes to the, the seven pin on the truck, and that is going to, uh, if, I, if I hit this, I can, uh, basically keep the truck plugged up. If I don't, it's going to pull power from, from the truck. Um, and that will do a very tiny trickle charge while I'm driving with that on. This over here is our front fuse panel for DC. So if I, if I cut this off right now, all the lights will shut off in the camper. The only thing that I don't know what it goes to is this little inline fuse right here. I have turned on everything and pulled this fuse out and I don't know what it goes to. I thought it went to the pump. It doesn't go to the pump. I have no idea what it goes to. It is, at this point, a mystery. So let's go into the smart solar right now. Okay, I'm gonna leave this right here where you guys can see it and then I'm gonna cut this on so we can both see it together. Let there be voltage. Wabaham. All right. We are bringing in two, one, two watts right now with the overcast. Five, 10, 11, 12. Okay, bringing in 0.5 amps. What do we got here? Come on, give me some juice flow. But it is overcast, so we're really not getting anything. Let's go back to our smart shunt because the heater just kicked on. And we're gonna see so we're pulling 3.6 amps and we're bringing in 0.7 amps. So you guys can do the math. That's uh, not a very sustainable situation at this point with, with overcast, but we have so much juice in the batteries, it's really not gonna matter. And you can see here, it says my time remaining at this current, um, current pull is gonna be three days, 14 hours. So basically four days. Um, if we ran this thing continuously like that with the current amps coming in, but add some sunny days We're gonna be going out there. We're gonna be staying out there a lot longer. It's almost like we're at a campsite right now, isn't it? Yeah, like you look outside of the compass and it looks like you're at you're camping. I mean, we are camping. And he yeah. wakes up every morning. She goes, hey, we're camping today. We are family ready We can go camping uh, non-stop we don't have to be looking at it every 10 minutes going okay honey you got to cut that off please don't run this because we're not gonna have enough power for tomorrow we're not gonna have that situation anymore so uh, shout out to my buddy Lance for helping me wire uh, this thing up he's got some other wiring uh, type videos on his his channel smash that like button for family camping subscribe right here if you want to see more awesome adventures in this big old thing the silver bullet and everything outdoors and I'll see you guys back in it on the next one.